Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. In case you're new here, I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, strategies, and a lot of freebies that you can take and use in your K through two classroom right away. Now, that being said, I like to make sure that my videos are relevant to what you're teaching right now in the classroom. So anytime you need a little inspiration on a skill that you're teaching, drop it down in the comments. Let me know, hey, you know, in the next month or the next week, I am going to be teaching doubles edition and I'd love some activities. I read my comments every single week. And when I see a pattern or an idea that I think other teachers will find beneficial, I love to make a video addressing that and giving you some of that activities and some of that inspiration that you might need. So that being said, this week I actually went ahead and asked my Facebook group what they are teaching in math. And so many of them said they are working on subtraction strategies. So that's what I have in store for you today. I'm actually gonna head over to my office right now. I have a freebie that I think you're going to like and a few activities I wanted to share with you. While I'm on my way there, make sure you like this video and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so before I go into some of the activities and strategies I like to use when teaching subtraction, I just wanna share that whenever I'm teaching any sort of math skill, I do it in the same kind of sequence, no matter what it is. So first we always introduce the skill that we're going to be teaching. So in this case, it would be subtraction. So, you know, students would learn that they are, the number is getting smaller. We are taking things away. Things are being removed with subtraction, right? As opposed to addition, which they've probably already learned about where the number is getting larger. Right after we learn what it is, we do a lot of hands-on practice. They are physically feeling and removing things. You know, they're building, they're removing, they're really understanding that things are getting smaller, that when we start with eight things and then we take three away, the number is smaller. They are also figuring out that the difference is five, but as a general rule, they're just learning subtraction, smaller, you know. After my students seem to have a grasp of that hands-on part, then I like to teach them some other strategies for using addition, right? We're not always going to have those manipulatives to go ahead and build and then remove. So I like to share a few different strategies they can try to use as they are practicing their subtraction and becoming masters at that skill. After I teach them a few different strategies, then it's all about practice, practice, practice. And you already know me, I love using games for practice, just finding different, unique, and engaging ways to get them to practice subtraction because you can't just give them a worksheet every day, they'll be so bored. So let me dive in and show you one of kind of each of those different parts. I'm gonna go ahead and share a hands-on activity with you. I will show you some of the anchor charts I use and different strategies I teach when teaching subtraction. And then I have a free uh, print and play game that you can go ahead and take and use in your class. For hands-on practice, the first game I love to have students use is called Build and Remove. And basically each student, or you can have them do it in pairs and you can split it up in centers, however you wanna do this, but it might be shiny because it's eliminated. But it says, let's subtract at the top. And basically it is two 10 frames, right? So you just need a page like this. And then I have gone ahead and made a bunch of Build and Remove cards. And this is just to get them practicing building and are moving. Again, this is very basic, it's at the beginning, but I want them to physically feel, when it says build eight, I want them to physically feel the number eight and then remove six to find the difference. I also like using cards like these because they get used to the terminology, what is the difference? As you can see here, the center is very simple, but it is effective. It is getting students used to, you know, building that number, removing it, and again, getting used to that terminology of what is the difference. Now, I tell my students that even if they already know eight minus six is two, I still wanna see them build it. I wanna see how they build that 10 frame. I wanna see them remove the six, and then I wanna see them write that difference and do it again. You know, especially in those K through two classrooms, it is important for my students to really understand what it means when I'm saying eight minus six. So even if they already know eight minus six equals two in their head and they just know it, however they happen to know it, I want to still see that they can recognize and show me what eight looks like, how to take six away, and the physical act of what subtraction really is. After my students have that hands-on piece down and they know what they're doing, 
I like to introduce a few different strategies. And the first one is using a number line. Now as teachers, our goal is to provide all these different strategies to our students and see which one, you know, they kind of stick to. As you get older, I'm sure you can go ahead and ask another adult to solve an addition or a subtraction problem, and they probably solved it a different way than you did. It's really cool that it's the teacher's job to kind of share all of them, and then whatever one sticks for each student is great. It's what works for them. So when using a number line, I like to show students to start at the larger number, of course, and hop back to find the difference. We always do this with our finger. And if you're also a K through two teacher, then you know the hardest part is getting them to not say one before they've jumped, right? They always say one and you're like, nope, you have to hop first because you're taking away that one. Which again, if you've already done the hands-on piece, that will be easier for them to understand because they know they have to remove that one they have to remove it from the number line too before they go ahead and say one as they're counting back. And after introducing each strategy, I like to spend that day practicing it. So I give students their own number lines here, sometimes just a number line worksheet, and I wanna see them physically trying to use that number line to go ahead and subtract. The next strategy I like to teach my students is a tricky one, but I find it's very important, and that is the counting back strategy. Now, just like in addition, this is kind of the counterpart to put the number in your head and add on. Here we are actually counting back. And I tell my students that if the number is small enough, they can do that on their fingers, or they can go ahead and draw dots like I show in this anchor chart. So I also, again, after I teach this and model it for students, I go ahead and give them some practice sheets that they can go ahead and try themselves. So here in the practice sheet, they'll have 20 minus eight. So they'll go ahead and draw those eight dots inside the box. They will put 20 in their head and then count back as they point to each dot to find the difference. Now the students have three different ways to practice subtraction within 20. You know, they can use manipulatives, they can use that number line, or they can put the number in their head and try counting back. This is when we practice, 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 and students can use whatever strategy kind of helps them the best. Now, all three of those strategy charts that I showed you are in my subtraction unit for first grade students, and it's all about subtraction within 20, and I actually have a visualization uh, strategy that I teach with some word problems, as well as a how to solve for missing numbers in a subtraction problem. Those are all in that unit too, and I will go ahead and link that down below. But after we teach the basic strategies, this is when we practice, 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 practice. When it's time for students to go ahead and practice all those different subtraction strategies, this is where I like to introduce all the print and play games. Now, I have print and play games for every single skill in math in first grade, and this is no different for subtraction. The cover of it looks right here if you wanna grab these on TPT, but I have a free one that I wanna share with you today that's from this unit, and it's called Fill the Spaces. Now, this game is really easy to play and I actually have two different versions. This is the, you'll see a 10 up here. So in this board, students are gonna go ahead and practice subtraction from the number 10. So for this one, they only need one die to play. And there is another board that I'm also gonna share with you guys. Uh, it'll be in the same download that is subtraction from 20 and you use two die to play. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so this game can be played with one or two players. If you're playing with two players, they will each get a different color marker. But again, for the 10 board, you only need this one die. So you'll go ahead and roll it. And they're always subtracting from 10. So 10 minus four, and they can do this with their fingers, number line, count back, manipulatives, whatever way you want them to do it. And 10 minus four is six. So they'll go ahead to the six column and write six then if they were playing it with a partner they would go ahead and take turns 10 minus six equals four they continue rolling and subtracting until all of the spaces are filled up hence fill the spaces now as they continue to do so they will start to see that one whole one whole row will be filled up and their turn would be skipped so there will be times when they are skipping turns and then once the whole board is filled up, they will count how many with their marker, how many they went ahead and filled up and whoever filled the most spaces is the winner. 
So there you go. I just give you a sneak peek into how I would teach subtraction in my classroom with just some of the strategies and activities that I like to use. So that build and remove sheet and the little build and remove cards, those are all in my subtraction unit linked down below on TPT. But that game that I have, Fill the Spaces, that's completely free. I put a link in it in my description as well for you to try it out. That was one of my print and play subtraction games. If you've made it this far, go ahead and drop me a comment down below and tell me what was your favorite subtraction strategy or thing that you saw from this video that you want to try in your classroom. As always, if you liked this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.